Thank you, Dudu. Okay, we're glad we are here in the BDS building in South Africa. Okay, and this is a word, I mean, this acronym BDS has become a very daring and sometimes taunting campaign for lots of people. Okay, why BDS? What does it mean? What is boycott, divestment, and sanctions? And do Palestinians have to use it? And why do we have to use that method? Okay. As you know, the uh, Palestinian BDS movement started back in 2005. And it's not only about a boycott, whether it's cultural, educational, economic, and so on. And divestment is much larger. But we have three points in our BDS movement. Okay? And it's a package. You either take the whole lot or you don't do it. One is to end the occupation. Okay. Two is the rights of the Arabs, the Palestinians who are in Israel, equal rights as citizens. And three, the whole issue of our refugees, the return of our refugees. If there's no return, there's, there should still be a very just solution. So for us, maybe in South Africa it was, yes, we put pressure, we put sanctions that you got, because then the global community was ready to take sanctions against uh, South Africa. And you were lucky because you brought in to apartheid. For us, when we look at it, and I will read what we said in the Karos document, so that it's very clear why we have taken it that steps, okay? In an occupation, in a conflict, all forms of resistance are legal. Even by international law, even carrying arms as a last resort is acceptable. I mean, this is official, okay? We Palestinians have tried everything. We have tried armed resistance. We have tried endless peace processes and negotiations, knowing very well that they will not lead anywhere. Okay. And the Karis document is really a word of faith, hope, and love. It is written by Christians, but it is not for Christians alone. It is for everybody. Uh, when Yusuf started speaking about Palestinians, he, he started so well and so simply by saying, our lives are exactly like that of our brothers and sisters, the Muslims. Okay? We know some Jewish families who still consider themselves as Palestinians because they are Palestinians of the land. And still, when we come to see about how we are going to do, what we're going to do with this, uh, when we addressed the issue of BDS in our Kairos document, okay, and I'm sure some of you have read it, some of you are aware of it, we put it under resistance, and resistance is put under the topic of love. You may say, those people are crazy. I'm going to read what we said. Palestinian civil organizations, as well as international organizations, NGOs, certain religious institutions, call on individuals, companies, and states to engage in divestment, economic and commercial boycott of everything produced by the occupation. Okay? We understand this to integrate the logic of peaceful resistance. These advocacy campaigns must be carried out with courage, openly, sincerely proclaiming that the object is not revenge, but rather to put an end to the existing evil, liberating both the perpetrators and the victims of injustice. The aim is to free both peoples from extremist positions of the different Israeli governments, bringing both to justice, accountability is extremely important, and reconciliation eventually. Okay? In this spirit and with this dedication, we will reach the longed for resolution to our problems, as indeed happened in South Africa and with many other liberation movements in the world. So as you see, I mean, it was a very carefully uh, thought about decision that we took as Kairos, along with the whole BDS movement that exists 
and I know that you had the BNC and Omar Barghouti speaking even in the same room. Okay. You may ask questions when we come to the questions about what kind of boycott you have to do and so on. It's very clear. I mean, what we are demanding for the world to do, okay, we have tried everything. We are at a point, at an impasse, which is becoming really dangerous, not only for us as Palestinians, for the region, but also for the world. Because what happens in Palestine is going to affect all of you. And especially if you are complicit in the decisions that are being taken in bringing about our, I would say, our tragic end, because this is what it looks like. So this, I mean, I said it very briefly, what the campaign is all about. And when it comes to questions and you want to ask more, we will go into more details. You spoke about the perception, but we have to be extremely honest, because in Islam, the Holy Land is a walk of Islam. We cannot, I mean, we cannot say that you don't believe that, okay? And people like you, who have seen how important the small region called Palestine, all throughout ages, I don't think it's haphazardly that it has been chosen as the cradle of three monotheistic religions. Okay. I call it a promising land, not a promised land. Having three religions there that can show to the world what does it mean to do the will of God, what does it mean to glorify God and worship God, each in our own different manner. And what is important is that there are human beings who are there. And how do we work? How do we educate our own three different religions to the people who are there? This is my challenge. I'm a Palestinian Christian, but I'm a Palestinian. My life has always been connected with Islam. We have chosen as a family never to be living in a Christian ghetto as such. Our relations are always with my Muslim neighbors, okay? And what do we teach? We see a rise in extremism. We cannot be blind about that. And I feel today, I mean, I've worked with the, uh, with the three religions for over 35 years now. But I think that what we need to do, and as Muslims, this is where you can do. What kind of education are we giving our own children, okay? Is the beautiful tasamah, the forgiveness that, is, that exists in Islam, is it being passed on to the children? Are the children seeing that there are Christians and Jews in that land? How do we teach them? It's the same responsibility that we have as churches and as rabbis have. We have to work to preserve the dignity of human being. And if religion is misused, and if religion is misused as Israel is trying to do today, then we are all in danger. So I would like you to pass that message. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being with us. But after all, what is religion? In Islam, what do we say about religion? Okay? We say it's the way we act with people. Ta'amul ma'annas. This is the way we act. And this is all what religion is about. I mean, it is not holding on to the land, holding on to the building, holding on to some sacred place. It's the people who are sacred. If they have a relationship with God, and that is what we show when we relate to others. So let us be human, and let us believe in the God who has created all of us equally. Thank you. To my Jewish friend, the first thing that the Jews should do is read their Bible correctly. You have all the prophets that show you which way to go to have justice. But that is, and this is the challenge I tell my, my Jewish friends. I think I read your prophets much more than you do. And that's where the way that you can see where justice should take you. I don't think he knows that the control of uh, Israel, I mean, when you are talking and you are asking the questions, you have to know that you're speaking of Israel not only controlling Israel, historical Palestine, but the laws that you are asking about and the rules, schooling and so on, are only applicable to East Jerusalem, which is also an occupied land. 
officially Israel, uh, East Jerusalem is occupied, okay? So his response to annexed the schools and so occupied. on. Annexed, not only occupied. Plus, it's yeah, it's, it's under no. Israeli jurisdiction. East Jerusalem is under Israeli jurisdiction. It was just carved out of the West <coughs> Bank and annexed. The West Bank is occupied by Israel. They gave uh, administrative control to the Palestinian Authority in 17% of the West Bank in the cities. Uh, some areas called Area B are joint control, but 60% of the West Bank is still controlled by Israel, but it's occupied, it has the status of occupied territory. Yeah, Jerusalem but is occupied and annexed. Yeah, I mean, it's annexed for Israel, but internationally it is occupied territory. It is the same as Ramallah, Gaza, and every, everything else, okay? So you are asking about labor laws, okay? What do you think we are? We are the cheap laborers who are begging to have food on our tables for our children to be able to live. Don't expect to have equal laws by Israel for our Palestinian workers who have to fight to go, to be, to go and work if they can in Israel. Sometimes they are even forced to build the settlements and the roads because we have to live.